We're back with another episode of Critical History. After talking about events that took place across the better part of a continent over three decades, a few hundred years ago, today we will take a quick but fascinating look at events that happened over a few milliseconds somewhere in the South Atlantic just about 40 years ago. You may have heard about it, but it wouldn't shock me if you had never heard about it either. A little something called the Vela Incident. What was the Vela Incident? Well, that would depend on who you ask and how gullible you are. September 22, 1979, just after midnight local time, somewhere in the vast expanses of the South Atlantic Ocean between the two remote uninhabited islands of Bouvet Island and Marion Island, a nuclear explosion was detected. Two bright flashes, milliseconds apart. Now wait a second, you're asking. If this location is so remote, how was a nuclear explosion detected? The answer to that is that in the late 60s, America launched a series of satellites with sophisticated equipment on board, capable of detecting a nuclear test anywhere on the globe. These were called VELA satellites, part of the Department of Defense's VELA project. The VELA project was developed in order to ensure the commies' compliance with the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty. This banned all nuclear tests in space or underwater, or in the atmosphere, although underground tests were still allowed. The satellites orbited Earth about a third of the distance between the Earth and the Moon, and each satellite was solar-powered and had 30 detectors on board, either for neutrons, X-rays, or gamma rays. With these detectors, the satellite could determine the location of any nuclear test, but only within a range of about 3,000 miles. Hence the confusion about where exactly the test occurred. A nuclear explosion in the atmosphere produces a very unique signature, a double humped curve, also called a double flash. And the Vela satellites were very good at their job. They recorded 41 nuclear tests on previous occasions accurately. Once launched, they detected every known atmospheric nuclear test. When shown the results, Herman Horlin, the lead developer of the bang meters used on the Vela satellites, said, No doubt about it, an atmospheric nuclear explosion, several kilotons in yield, probably surrounded by lots of mass, like a barge or the likes of it. That was his response without being told anything else. So it certainly sounds like a nuke was tested on an abandoned barge in the South Atlantic on that fateful day. So what's the mystery? What's the controversy? What's the source of confusion? Well, although South Africa voluntarily dismantled all its nuclear weapons before handing power to the communists, I mean the ANC, Israel has never admitted to possessing nuclear weapons. America knew South Africa had nuclear weapons in 1979 because they, uh, the Alice Chalmers Corporation, had sold a 20 megawatt nuclear reactor to them in 1965. The South African government also joined America's PNE program, the so-called Peaceful Nuclear Explosions program, under the guise of using nukes to assist in the mining industry. There also seems to have been collaboration between South Africa, uh, Pakistan, and France, so the country's atomic research was not much of a secret. So let's get to the fun stuff. Why are we even discussing this? Just a nuclear test by a couple nations trying to not attract unnecessary attention to themselves, right? Well, it's a bit more complicated, and we'll have to get back to that. One of the most interesting aspects of the Vela incident, to me, is the official story. When I first read up on the topic on Wikipedia a few years ago, they said it could have been caused by a lightning superbolt followed by an atmospheric entry of a meteor in the exact same place, milliseconds apart. You have to give them credit for audacity and creativity. As mentioned, 
On September 22, 1979, a Vela 5B detected the characteristic double flash of a nuclear explosion. Officially, it was not a joint nuclear test by Israel and South Africa. Rather, it is unsatisfactorily explained. Interestingly, Jimmy Carter, America's president at the time, did deem it to be evidence of a joint nuclear test. So why the change of tune? In his bid for re-election, Carter appointed a scientific panel that then issued a classified report which concluded the Vela incident was not a nuclear test. Hmm. So if not a nuclear test, then what? No single known natural phenomena can replicate the signature double flash of a nuclear weapons test. So case closed, right? Not exactly. Because if you really, really need to lie about something, for reasons we'll get to, you better come up with something. The ideas they settled on were, it could have been an instrumentation glitch. The problem being, the bang meters worked in a very specific way in order to not detect false positives. There had to be two flashes milliseconds apart. According to a State Department insider at the time, Hodding Carter III, the Carter White House was in a sheer panic that Israel might be involved. Eighteen years after the fact, on April 20th, 1997, Aziz Pahad, South Africa's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, was quoted in the Israeli daily newspaper Haaretz as confirming that the 1979 flash over the Indian Ocean was indeed from a South African nuclear test. Now, he backtracked this confirmation and said he was merely confirming rumors that had circulated for years. But in addition to that, in February 1994, Commodore Dieter Gerhardt, the former commander of a South African naval base, said, Although I was not directly involved in planning or carrying out the operation, I learned unofficially the flash was produced by an Israeli South African test, codenamed Operation Phoenix. The explosion was clean and was not supposed to be detected but they were not as smart as they thought, and the weather changed, so the Americans were able to pick it up. Back to the scientific panel that Carter appointed. It seems he wanted to get to the bottom of it, or at least he wanted to misdirect the public, depending on your point of view. They released the Ruina report that was chaired by a former director of DARPA, Jack Ruina. The only thing the panel was told was do a strictly scientific study and ignore all political questions, such as who might have done it. Israeli-South African cooperation on development of missiles that could carry nuclear warheads was off the table for them to consider. The Ruina report suggested that sunlight glinted off a micrometeor that then struck the satellite, which registered the double flash. The Stanford Research Institute looked into the report's conclusion and said they figured the chances of that being the correct explanation were 1 in 100 billion. A diplomatic, scientific way of saying total BS, if you ask me. The Naval Research Laboratory also completed a 300-page report that concluded the incident was likely a nuclear test. but. This report is still classified today. The Ruina report was classified initially, but declassified not long afterwards. So it's available today. So what was the purpose of the Ruina report then? Well, it seems it was to avoid a full-fledged investigation of the Vela event, and also to use purely technical analysis to create amb ambiguity and thus avoid a political problem. So it seems pretty clear-cut, right? All this time we've spent talking about what was obviously a joint Israeli-South African nuclear test. But why all the effort to cover it up, to misdirect people, hush it up, and ultimately lie about it for more than 30 years? Well, there are a few reasons. At the time, the SALT II Treaty was being negotiated by Jimmy Carter. He was also involved in Israeli-Palestinian peace talks, not to mention attempting to get re-elected as president. 
and he didn't, if you're wondering. Ronald Reagan beat him in, that, uh, in the election that followed by a landslide. There is one more reason, though. As I mentioned before, even though South Africa dismantled their nuclear weapons, Israel has never admitted to having them. Why? Well, even though an entire book has been written about Israel's nuclear capabilities, titled The World's Worst Kept Secret, it is still not something they are keen to admit. Not only did Israel sign the limited test ban, the treaty prohibiting nuclear tests anywhere but underground, they have not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And this is where things get interesting. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but it seems that aid from the American government to a nuclear power that is not signed to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty is illegal. And of course, Israel is the recipient of billions of dollars of American aid annually. I don't know about you, but for me, that was the final piece of the puzzle. Why so much political pressure was applied to deny that it was a nuclear weapons test. Billions and billions of dollars. On average, three billion a year. Multiplied by almost 40 years? Pretty soon we're talking real money. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like, remember to subscribe, and if you want to support the channel and read a fascinating book this summer, check out Conquest of Truth. The Kindle version is available now, and the link is in the description. Tune in next time, and as always, stay critical. Roll the outro.